All right, this lesson is going to focus on an extended concept about um, grouping related variables with objects. So we've looked at different data types before, right? We know about number data types, string data types, Boolean data types, true and false. Um, JavaScript also has an object data type. And you can think of an object data type as a collection of name value pairs. So the collection is important. It allows us to, to group things together. Um, and what are we grouping? These name value or property value pairs. Okay. So to do this, all we do is the same as any variable, let, and choose a valid variable name, is assigned. But instead of a number or a string, we do um, these curly braces. And inside of these curly braces, you can list these property or name value pairs. So you give it a name, just like you give it a, a kind of like a variable, right? A colon and then a value, like a number or a string or a Boolean, etc. Comma, a name, colon, value, comma, name, colon, value. And then to look up the different values that we're storing, you just go the, the name of the object itself and then dot notation. So my object dot and then whatever property you want to look up, or whatever name you want to look up. So probably easiest is just to see it in an example here. Um, I actually have uh, this code um, copied down here. So let's just look at it here. So what this program is doing is just, well, let's refresh that. Starts off with this bubble that's a circle bubble that's randomly moving around. Oh, and if it gets too small, I'm going to get an error. Anyway, we'll see. Okay, um, so here's the idea is that I've got this bubble, and I want to control its, its x, y, its location, and its r, its radius. Right? So it's moving around randomly, and the radius is changing sizes. And I'm doing that by animating it. All right, in my draw function, I just change x by a random value between negative 5 and 5. Same with y and radius, a value between negative 1 and 1. And then I draw the bubble, bubble x, bubble y, bubble r. No big deal. But sometimes this can get a little cumbersome, like bubble x, bubble y, bubble, and what if I had a second bubble? Bubble 2 x, bubble 2 y, bubble 2 r, and you get this big long list of variables. Um, objects allow us to create one variable that can store these x, y, and r properties. So I'm going to get rid of all this, and we're just going to create a bubble object, like so. Okay, and inside of my bubble object, I need three properties, x, y, and r. So we just go x colon um, 400. That's one name value pair, or property value pair, comma, and then y colon 300 is another pair, comma, r colon 25. Okay, now this one variable bubble is storing a collection of three different properties. All right, um, I like writing it out in one line like this to show you that this is simply one line of code, right? This one variable is assigned this object. If you um, format your document, Shift Alt F, you'll see that it usually um, writes out an object like this. And that's just the standard so that it's easy to see the properties listed like so. But it's still one variable, one line of code with three properties. Now, if I save this, my program will not work anymore because bubble X is not defined, right? There is no more bubble X. There is just a bubble variable. And to access the X value, we go dot X. Same with Y, dot Y. Think of the dot as like opening the door into the object, and then we specify what um, value we want to look at inside the object. Um, that should be good. And then down here, same thing. Bubble dot x, bubble dot y, and bubble dot r. Save, and it's working again. Okay, so nothing, nothing huge here in terms of like wow, mind blown concept, but. Just it, it's nice for organization of your variables that you can have one variable with all these different properties and you can have as many properties as you'd like. Right. So if I wanted to make a second bubble, you know, let bubble two be assigned. And actually, you know what? Why wouldn't I just copy and paste? Copy and paste and just change this to bubble two. And I can have the same property names, X, Y, and R. And then just the, the object itself, the variable or object itself is just the bubble two. And let's start this one at 300 maybe, and this one at 500. And, and then I could add um, properties like color. Maybe this one's orange, 
comma, and this one is going to have a color property of purple. Who knows? And now I'm going to copy and paste this. And I just need to change bubble two, bubble two, bubble two. Right, so it's going to animate as well. And then let's copy and paste this drawing code. And instead of this, we'll go bubble.color. And here we'll go bubble2.color. And then bubble2, bubble2, bubble2. All right, save that. There we go. We've got our two bubble objects, bubble and bubble2. They have the same property names, but they're different, um, storing different locations in memory, because this is my bubble object with these properties, my bubble2 object with these properties. Okay, anyway, like I said, it's just a nice way, these objects are a nice way to, to group related variables, right? A bubble has all these different properties. Let's group them all together inside of one collection. It's kind of useful. Okay, hope that made sense. Um, oh, <laughs> the radius is negative. So, because it's changing size randomly, if it gets too small, of course, it'll become a negative radius and give you an error. We'd have to add an, an if statement there to uh, prevent that from happening. But that's not the point of this lesson. The point of this lesson was to teach you about objects and how we can group related variables with those objects. I hope you can use that in your project. All right, take care and see you in the next video.